Arsenal 1, Man United 0. Don't know why my, uh, my hands are a bit blue. It's from the putty I've been using, but yeah, don't know how it got to this point in terms of the extent of it being this blue, but yeah. I'd love to say I was surprised about this result, but I'm really not. I didn't really expect anything other than an Arsenal win. Um, United um, were really poor. And I thought um, Kobe Mainu and Garnacho were the only like good players for United in that game. The rest of them were absolutely terrible. Um, I don't know how many times United passed the ball sideways and backwards. And every time they got the ball, they were always trying to hoof it long. I felt like I was watching Burnley at points under Sean Dyche. Um, but Ten Hag has got to be sat. I hope he doesn't because I, I flourish from United being bad. But... Um, if United ever want to get back to the top level, they need to get a world-class manager. And he's far from that. Um, if I was United, I'd look at um, trying to bring in Hassan Flick from... Um, he, he, I don't know if he's actually still got a club at the moment. But all I know is that um, he won the treble with um, Bayern Munich in 2020. So maybe United should look at trying to get him in. Because if they get Mourinho in the football won't improve. If they get Potter in, yeah, the football might improve, but they're going to concede goals for fun. If they get De in, it will be the same thing as Potter. Good football, but they'd concede goals for fun. Um, they even need to look at getting Hassan Flick in or Unai Emery. I don't think Unai Emery will leave Aston Villa, though, especially if they get top four. And I think he's better off at, like, um, a smaller club than... Um, managing a top six club but maybe at some point he might go back to a top six club or um maybe a club like newcastle or something because i think eventually if he does this well with villa from more than one season he's going to end up leaving aston villa but i think the scoreline could have been more than one nil really because united didn't really properly test raya they had a few chances where it was like wide and into the side netting, but that was about it. I don't know how many times they put crosses into the box and it was collected by David Raya. Um, I don't think they actually made a decent cross the whole game. It was either going onto an Arsenal player's head or into the, um, the hands of the Arsenal keeper, David Raya. Diallo was alright as well, but... Casemiro is finished. He's absolutely pants now. He needs to go to either the Saudi League or the MLS because he's not good enough anymore. And... Um, they need to get someone new in there for the CDM. Um, and... Um, they need new centre-backs. Um, they could go and get another striker, perhaps, because I know they've got that youngster, Force, and I think his name is, but they need a bit of, like, um, a striker with a bit more experience um, to give Hoyland a bit of competition. Because the thing is with Hoyland at the moment, um, regardless of um, what he does, he's going to play because... There's no real competition for him in that striker position at United. So, yeah. I thought Saliba and Gabriel was really good for Arsenal. Um, they've been really good all season. They've got to get in the team of the season, if I'm being brutally honest. Um, but Rice um, was fantastic as well. Um, I think that was a difference because... Um, Arsenal had a player in CDM that could actually pass the ball forward, whereas whenever Casemiro passed the ball forward, half the time it wasn't going to where he was intending to send the ball. And it was his fault for the Arsenal goal as well. If you actually watch it back, it was clearly his fault because he didn't get out fast enough to block the cross and he let the cross come in too easy and... Um, 
ultimately then Trossard finished it off. I think Trossard's underrated as well. He doesn't really get the plaudits that he deserves. It's all about like how good Saka is, how good Gabriel is, how good um, Declan Rice is, how good Martinelli is. He's one of those players that um, would get into most top six teams. Um, he'd start for Spurs. He'd start for United. Um, would he start for City? Yeah, I'm going to say, for based on right now, he would start for City. Um, Liverpool, yeah, I think he'd start. Um, Chelsea, yeah, he'd start. So I think he would start for all the top six teams. And he would start for teams like Newcastle as well, so fair play to Trossard, really good player. Um, but one thing I do have to say that Arsenal is missing is a striker, because... Havertz is, 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 has done fairly well this season, but he's not a natural striker. Jesus isn't a natural striker really either. Because he's, he's good like um, at holding the ball up. And he's good like physically wise in terms of like holding off defenders. But when it comes to putting the ball in the back of the net, that's where he needs to improve. If um, Arsenal gets someone like Isak from Newcastle, then that's when I think there'd be a serious problem. Because... Isak, in my personal opinion, other than Haaland, is the best striker in the league. And I do rate Isak highly, and I think he's teetering towards world class, if not world class already. And I think at some point, he's going to go to a bigger club than Newcastle, whether it be in the Premier League or worldwide. Um, but United... Um, so poor. Even though the score was only 1-0, it feels like um, it was a bigger defeat because they never really tested David Raya. Apparently, from what I've heard, they've had three shots on target, but I don't remember a single one of them. And I did watch the whole game, so no one can say that I didn't watch the whole game. Um, but it... Oh, yeah, I do remember one of them, actually. It was when Anthony, like, hit it straight into the hands of the keeper, David Raya. But apart from that, I don't remember the other two. Um, but I don't get how United could have been, like, 1-0 down and they were bringing on youngsters on. That's just embarrassing. The quality on display in that United squad today, Amrabat, crap. Casemiro, crap. Johnny Evans, he's a granddad, crap. Um, Diego Dallo, crap. Aaron Wan Bissaka, crap. Garnacho, half decent. Diallo, half decent. Menu, half decent. The rest of the team, crap. Um, I'm going to say it now that next season. If United don't get a half-decent manager in and they don't invest in the squad as well, I don't see them finishing any higher than 7th. But if they get a half-decent manager in and um, they invest in the squad well, then you never know. Who knows? They could get back into the top four. But I think if they get Hassan Flick in, then give it three years... And I think they'd be within the title race. Maybe the first two years, they'd come like third or fourth. And then within the third year, I think they could win the league. Because I think in three years' time, Pep won't be at City anymore. Um, Klopp's obviously already going to be gone by then because this is his last season. And he's only got two games left of being in the Premier League. Um, and... The only like really other good manager in the league would be Arteta, and I do rate Postecoglou and Emery as well. So they'd be there thereabouts as well. Should they still be at their respective clubs at that time? But um, yeah, I was really disappointed by United because I didn't expect them to get anything, especially after watching them the other night against Crystal Palace. But. They just didn't have the fight at all, really, did they? Um, 
And I think they were so bad in possession as well in, in the attacking areas. And I know Rashford's been so bad this season, but I feel like if he'd have been playing today, he might have made a difference. Because I think with his speed, he could have maybe stretched Arsenal a little bit. Because Garnacho was trying to stretch Arsenal a little bit, but whenever like he was getting to the byline, there was no one there to run onto the balls that he put into the box. And Garnacho should be playing for a better team. Diallo should be playing for a better team, and so should Kobe Mainu. So that's my thoughts on the game anyway. Um, it's going to the last game of the season. That's official now. I just hope we don't drop points to Spurs on Tuesday night, because... If we do that, then it's going to come down to goal difference. And by the looks of it, I think Arsenal's three goals ahead of us in terms of goal difference at the moment. Because um, we scored four yesterday, that reduced to two. But then with Arsenal scoring one today, that puts it back up to three, I think. If I'm right in saying that anyway. And Everton's not going to do anything because they're already safe. So if we don't win the final two games, then Arsenal will win the league. Because I can see Arsenal beating Everton about four or five nil because... Everton's already safe, Arsenal's at home, and Everton's going to be on the beach, so that's going to be an easy win for Arsenal. And I know West Ham are going to be on the beach as well, but it that ju that's a game that like smells of um, us going 2-0 down, just like we did against Aston Villa a few years ago, and having to come back and score three goals in five minutes and win the game 3-2. So I wouldn't be surprised if that West Ham game ends up being a bit of a banana skin for us, because... On paper, when I looked at the fixtures coming into the final running of the season, I did say that West Ham, on paper, looked the easiest. But when you actually think about it, I mean, it would be typical City for the easiest game on paper to be made out to end up being the hardest. So, it's going to be a real good ride to the end of the season. Next Sunday, this time next week, we could be champions, we might not. And... Um, if we're not champions, then it'd be disappointing. But you can't win the league every season, so yeah. But what would be like annoying is that we've had it in our hands and then we would have let it slip. It wouldn't have been a bottle job, but it would have felt like a bit deflating considering that we had it in our court and then... We let it out of our court and then ended up losing it. So, yeah. Drop a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you guys in the next one. I'm doing a reaction to the Villa Liverpool game tomorrow as well, I think. So, stay tuned for that. So, turn on the notification bell for that. And um, have a lovely rest of your Sunday. Or Monday. I don't know wherever you guys are watching this from. But, yeah. Um, have a nice day wherever you are. Take care.